Welcome everyone, and thanks for listening in to this episode of our Chat with the Chair podcast. Today we're joined by Dr. Bill Regine, the Isidore and Fanny Schneider Foxman Professor and Chair of Radiation Oncology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, President of University of Maryland Faculty Physicians, Inc., and Executive Director of the Maryland Proton Treatment Center. Dr. Regine, you're an award-winning, internationally recognized expert in the field of radiation oncology with accolades such as Best Doctor in America, Best Doctor in Baltimore, and Top 1% of Doctors from various organizations. You also serve in many leadership roles across our University of Maryland entities. But tell us more about yourself, your upbringing, your personal and clinical interests, and why you became a physician. Sure, so I I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, My parents are right off the boat from Italy. I just did well in school. I think I got the work ethic from my parents. Um, I enjoyed sports and you know, next thing you know, people say, oh, you should apply to medical school. So there, I was the first one, I have 48, because all of my mom's brothers all kind of moved to Brooklyn and they all have like four kids. So I have like 49 first cousins or something like that. And I was the first one to grad, get a four year degree uh, from a university. And uh, people was like, the, the teachers are like, oh, you should go to med school. And I go, oh, okay. I was and I was a chemistry major and a physics minor, and I had a job offer with GE to get an MBA. They said you work in the lab for two years, you get your MBA, we'll give you a car and apartment in Schenectady, New York. And I only applied to five med schools, and all these people were applying to like thirty med schools. I had good grades. I'm like, dude, I don't have enough money. Like, and my old man goes, ah, if you're good enough, you get in. We hate to talk with a much more heavy accent. Um, And I got into Syracuse. I went to med school in Syracuse. Um, I was all set. I was going to be a sports medicine orthopedic doctor. I was thinking about emergency medicine. And there was a group of us who were like the gym rats. We would, after meds class, we would go hang out and play basketball. Playing basketball, me and this guy get into it a little bit during the game. And afterwards, we kind of apologized to each other. And he said, oh, I'm chief resident of radiation oncology. I'm like, what the hell is radiation oncology? And he started explaining the physics. And I go, man, that sounds pretty good. He goes, oh, come into the department. And I was hooked. Then I went to residency at Jefferson in Philly. And my first job out of uh, residency was St. Jude in Memphis, which was a phenomenal experience. Two years, I was taking care of kids. Um, I got uh, to learn ground like on the ground floor of learning how to do uh, really high innovative radio surgery, we call it, where you can deliver high doses of radiation to the brain very precisely on kids. We were like one of the first in the country. So I got pretty excited, but I didn't want to keep taking care of kids. So I did that for two years. And then I moved to Kentucky where I became a, the vice chair of radiation oncology in, at University of Kentucky in Lexington. Um, eventually associate director of the cancer center uh, I got interviewed for like four chair positions, and this was my fourth time I got interviewed at Maryland. And uh, I was hooked. I thought it was an institution that was very much invested in the commitment to cancer and, and the academics that go with it, that I was, it was a no brainer. So I came here in 2002 and I've been here since. It's been a phenomenal time. When you think back through the entirety of your career, what would you say you're most proud of? Uh, this department, radiate. When I came here in two thousand two, uh, the de- you know, if you look at metrics, the department was ranked forty uh, first amongst radiation oncology departments, forty first in the country in NIH funding, um, and and uh, I then was probably one of the youngest chairs in the country when I was hired in two thousand two. And in the opening line of my offer letter from then Dean Wilson, who hired me. Lily says, hey, happy to make you, I don't know if I said happy, but more for you to make you chair of radiation oncology. And we would expect that you would make us top, uh, top 10 in NIH research funding in five years. Uh, and we hit it in year four. Year four, we went from 41st in the country to number five in the country. And ever since then, by the way you measure research dollars now, we, we rank number one or two in the country. But it's not just the research. The other part that I'm really proud of, people come in my department, especially patients, because that's the most important thing we do, right? Everything, whether it's research, education, has to revolve around the patient. 
people come in and they're like, oh my God, like the energy in your department, the attitude, you guys take care of serious illness and everybody has a positive, everybody's upbeat no matter how hard. I go, yeah, that's, that's the, I don't know what you want to call it, my regine Italian family. Like I, I treat us, we're a team and I want to treat my team like we're family. We're going to be together most of the time. Might as well care for each other, not just the patient. So if we care for each other, we take care of the patient. Uh, but if you look at where we are, so we hit this level of excellence in research. When I came here, the residency program was okay. And now since then, on a, a you know the ACGME, right? They did a review, first review, they go, oh my God, you guys get no citations. Next go around, the last one, we got, not only we got no citations, we got two commendations uh, for some pretty innovative education stuff. Like I, one of the things we believe in, you know, 80% of cancer patients are cared for in the community, right? So we built community sites together with Dr. Cullen and, and the philosophy of the Greenbaum Cancer Center that we want to bring that, as much as we can, that access to innovative clinical trials, advanced technology to your backyard, right? People don't want to come from Hartford County, downtown, if you don't have to. So we have that out there and our residents and the faculty we hire, that, we hire out there are outstanding. They're staying up with the literature, uh, they're at the cutting edge of understanding and education and they teach our residents. Our residents spend some time there. So what, that was one of the commendations that, hey, you really are making it so that community experience is also part of the downtown academic experience. Patients come in our department and they are absolutely blown away at the level of commitment, investment, and time, passion, and people are so focused on that. Uh, and that is so important to me uh, in terms of how you care for a patient. That leads into my next question. So in addition to leading the Department of Radiation Oncology, you yourself provide patient care. What is your patient care philosophy? Yeah, like thinking that I could be a family member. Uh, the other day I was on the phone, person gets on the line. He says, I have a patient for you, doctor. I said, great, I'm sitting here with my resident and I put it on speaker. And they go, oh, this patient has, you know, had a tumor removed from the leg. He's really anxious. Um, you know, I'm hoping you can see, I go, yeah, we'll see him tomorrow. Now, I had to juggle my schedule around. My residents go, yeah, but we have, I go, dude, that's okay, we'll figure it out. He's got cancer, right? We have that kind of team mentality. Um, and everybody's, it's, I, I, there is some truth, right? How the team behaves, it starts from the top. And I've been blessed with the, the, the folks on the radiation oncology team. They all, they all believe it with me. So that's the big, that's center point. Patient care is center point. For all we do in research and education, everything centers around a great patient experience. What would you say makes a great physician? What are some characteristics of someone who would be successful in this career? You gotta be committed to being a lifelong learner because things change so fast, right? It's one of the reasons I love the being in this ac you know, academic environment with the residents, right? It, uh, since we have to teach residents, we can't help but being at the cutting edge and the latest in terms of research and publications. We have journal clubs, we have conferences, teaching rounds. I think that could be a little bit harder outside of this atmosphere. I think it's one of the strengths of when people come and get seen at a place like this is that it's, it's much easier for me to be a lifelong learner. And I think, and don't get me wrong, they're a great community docs, but they have, they have that quality. They're committed to continue to stay up to date. And it's been challenged with COVID, bringing a human touch to that experience with patients. So my rule is we don't leave the room without putting a hand on a patient. So I'll either shake your hand, I'll put my hand on your shoulder. And somebody taught me that when I was a third year, and it makes a huge difference for sure. Tell us about some of the research that's currently underway at the University of Maryland. Uh, we do a lot. So some cool stuff include uh, combining radiation, uh, uh, advanced technology radiation like proton therapy with heat or hyperthermia and when you put high it's interesting when you put hyperthermia with radiation or especially with proton it significantly enhances the effectiveness and the reason that's important is i tell people if, if i took the tumor out of everybody's body and radiate them i can cure them all right our challenge as a specialty is well tumor sits in the human body right so if it's in the chest or the breast 
the heart's there, the lungs there. If it's in the abdomen, you got the bladder, the rectum. So that those normal tissue that surrounds the tumor can limit how much radiation you can get, right? I can't give that full dose if I took it out of the body, right? But if I can add something like heat, and when I'm talking about hyperthermia, I'm talking heating tumors to temperatures to like a low grade fever. So it's not, it's not like really burning the patient. So when you heat, now, instead of you know, the radiation being equivalent to giving, let's say, you know, 7,000 units, I made it equivalent to being 10,000 units without increasing the dose to the surrounding normal tissue. So we're, we lead that in this country uh, for sure. And we got other cool things with protons. We're, uh, we're doing something called flash radiation. We have the ability in the, the cyclotron and the accelerator of the proton to deliver all of the radiation dose that normally takes a few minutes. We've done some experiments that were leading edge in this country where we go, hey, what if you deliver it, deliver it all in literally a second? It's that fast and we call it flash. And what we found is when you, at least in the lab, when you treat tumor cells with flash, the tumor cells die, but a normal uh, cell around it, it's like they didn't even see it. So now we're advancing that. that would be pretty cool, right? Like you just, and we could treat tumors and not, uh, you know, treat them to a dose, get rid of them and not, and do even less risk of normal tissue da damage. How do you see the field of radiation oncology changing over the next five to 10 years? Well, it's been changing a lot since I started 20 years ago. So when I, you know, I was, like I said, I was one of the younger chairs. And I remember, you know, okay, you're gonna get in front of all the chairs from surgery give your vision, right? So I literally said, I go, uh, look, I think um, my vision for our specialty is we're gonna eliminate the use of surgery in the care of cancer. People are like laughing like 21 years. Now, there are so many advances now. There are so many tumors that we treat now where we've really decreased the use of surgery. For instance, brain tumors, right? We wanted, to, we were the first, in the area to have a gamma knife treatment. Now we have something called the EDGE, which is the ability to deliver these high doses of radiation to tumors in the brain. And years ago, patients would have had a craniotomy. Now, and we've now invented a machine called the gamma pod, where we're moving studies along where we envision early stage breast cancer, instead of getting, a lot of patients get like a lumpectomy now and then get radiation to the breast, we can, same principle as the gamma knife, we call it the gamma pod, we can deliver a high dose to these really small breast tumors because a lot of patients get them found early because of mammograms that we think in the future might not even need even surgery. So I, I would say we are going to continue to grow as a modality um, and, and we'll do it together with surgeons, but we're not gonna do the same level of cutting that we did years ago. Why should physicians refer to the University of Maryland and what sort of patients would be appropriate for your department? Yeah, look, I uh, remember amongst all patients who get a cancer diagnosis, 60% of those patients get radiation as part of their treatment. So we are a major treatment modality for cancer. Um, so most anybody with a solid tumor, uh, radiation will likely play a role. So I would say anybody with a cancer diagnosis should at least get an opinion. And not just because it's radiation oncology. Like when you come see, and this is a reason to come see us in radiation, because when you see us, all of the patients, and this is why I'm proud of being part of the Greenbaum Cancer Center, all patients who come and get seen by us are presented to what we call the cancer specific multidisciplinary team. So when I see a head and neck cancer, once a week, all the head and neck cancer specialists in chemotherapy, surgery, radio, we're meeting and we're talking about the head and neck cancer patients. So all of us are putting the best of our toolboxes out on the table to come up with the best treatment plan for the patient. So that that's the advantage and why a patient would want to see us. Other, and also, you know, just from the, the innovation of technology uh, we definitely have the most advanced you're going to have in the area from a radiation standpoint. And then as a cancer program, as well as a department of radiation, 
we're going to have these the latest and innovative cutting edge clinical trials for patients who might have really advanced cancers or uh, you know might want to be or have access to more advanced therapies that are coming down the pipeline. So I think those are pretty good reasons to come see us. We also, the other, the other benefit of coming to see us for docs who say, oh, well, what if I, it's, the patient goes there, I'll never see the patient. Well, we have this huge, University of Maryland Radiation College is now a network, right? So we're at Hartford County in Upper Chesapeake. We're at Anne Arundel County at Baltimore Washington Medical Center. We're at Easton Hospital on the Eastern Shore. Uh, we're at Howard County and Howard County General Hospital. We have the only proton center in the state of Maryland, right? Which specifically came of that 60% of patients who get radiation, about 20 to 30% will get a benefit from proton therapy. Well, guess what? We're the only proton center in the, the state. And protons, it's a charged particle. When it delivers radiation, it really does it in a way that minimizes even less exposure of normal tissue radiation. So our philosophy is we want to bring all of the cutting edge, innovative technology, access to clinical trials as much best we can in your backyard. Certain things we can't bring everywhere, right? You can't have a proton center. I mean, that was a $200 million facility. You can't put that in all those sites. You're not going to have a gamma pod or some of the hyperthermia stuff we have. But 95% of state-of-the-art care and access to all those innovative stuff we built in all of those centers. So when we see a patient anywhere, near, that's a pretty big swath of area, right? If they're anywhere near any of those sites and we go, oh, they can get all that at Hartford County, at Eastern Shore, we send them back and they get treated there. So I think that's another big advantage of coming to see us. For physicians who are listening in, what are the networking opportunities or just opportunities to connect with you and your team? Well, one, there'll be contacts they'll be given for after this. Day. We put on educational um, symposiums. Uh, you know, in January, we put a best of radiation oncology. Um, we have a hyperthermia school. Um, we put in uh, other educational uh, uh, symposiums that you can look on our website and we Typically, on any of these symposiums, we have 60, 70 people from the region come in uh, and we interact. Uh, I think we're pretty well known. We, people like my faculty and staff. We actually put, we hold tours for the Proton Center. Uh, usually, if you can, if it's more than, we, and I've had, since it's open, we've done, which was 2016, we've done over 400 tours. Many of them are physicians with their staff and we'll have a lunch for them. Some we've had dinner at the end of the day and it was better for them. And we'll do took us proton therapy is pretty cool. The physics of how it's delivered and we educate them that like here's the best the best tumor types that could benefit from proton therapy. So we're a pretty extroverted uh, group of faculty I'm pretty proud of. So uh, we're happy to connect with people anyway, especially if it could potentially benefit a cancer patient. Before we close out, is there anything else you think listeners should know about the University of Maryland, about your department, uh, about what's coming next in this field? I think the thing I want to highlight is not just like when you come to see the radiation on college, you're coming to see the whole University of Maryland Green About Cancer team. What it, you know, what's pretty unique here is we had our people instead of, and nothing wrong with the community docs, but community docs tend to be you know, have to know the, you know, the the best of 10 different types of tumors, right? We have people who, our careers are focused on two or three types of tumors. So when you get seen in radiation ecology, again, you're meeting, you're gonna get reviewed by medical oncologists who do nothing but take care of breast cancer or GI cancer or brain tumors, same with radiation doctors and surgeons. And I think that's that's pretty unique, that's hard to find. Uh, and again, we are also a department that very much wants to, has partnered and stays connected with the community physicians at large. So, uh, you know, we're always there to help. And, and again, I think knowing that that's a unique feature we have to offer is something that both not only patients but referring physicians uh, I think have, have enjoyed 
have an access to. Thanks again for stopping by for Chat with a Chair, brought to you by University of Maryland Faculty Physicians, Inc. For more information about today's guest or to listen to additional episodes, visit umfpi.org backslash podcast. Until next time.